And the men of the city did as Jezebel had sent unto them, and as it was written in the letters she had sent unto them. They carried Naboth forth out of the city and stoned him with stones that he died. And it came to pass that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, which he refused to give to thee for money, for Naboth is not alive, but dead. Our reading today was the story of Jezebel, whose name has come to stand for the wickedness of women. The painted Jezebel of 2 Kings chapter 9, a woman who was shallow and profane. was she who persuaded her husband Ahab to kill Naboth, and for this she was punished. She had got found body. And of Jezebel also spoke the Lord, saying, The dog shall eat Jezebel by the wall of Jezreel. She had sold herself to work evil in the sight of the Lord. Punishment was death. This is the God of the Old Testament. Wrathful, unforgiving. We may find this at odds with our understanding of Christianity. But for the Jezebels of this world, death is the price that must be paid. The body of Alice Corrigan was discovered at the site known as Black Ridge Woods at exactly 10.15 a.m. by Miss Jane Martindale, who was on a cycling holiday in the area and who made a note of the time. It was her opinion that the woman had been dead only a short while, a view shared by the police surgeon who examined the body where it had been found at half past 11. We have several witnesses who have attested that the dead woman's fiancé, Mr. Edward Deverell, was on the train from London, and this didn't arrive until 20 past 10. This inquest therefore returns a verdict of murder by person or persons unknown. Poirot. You think so, Miss Lemon? It is true. But for the grand dinner of Captain Hastings, it is necessary to make the impression this far. The opening night of his new Argentinian restaurant. It will be a new experience, this cuisine of the Argentine. I didn't know the Argentine had a cuisine. Uh, Miss Lemon, are you sure you will not be able to join us? I'm way behind with my filing, Mr. Poirot. I'm sure you'll have a good time without me. Um. <laughs> Something wrong, Mr. Poirot? Yes, what do you think, Miss Lemon? This jacket seems to have shrunk a little, no? Here and here. Oh, hardly think so. Maybe you've put on a little weight. I... No. No, no, Miss Lemon. That is not possible. Remind me, if you please, to speak to my cleaners tomorrow. You have called for the taxi? It's outside. Bon. So, to... El Ranchero. Very kind of you to invite me, Captain Hastings. On the contrary, Chief Inspector. It's very good of you to come. This is a new venture for me, and to be honest, I need all the reassurance I can get. You have invested a great deal of your capital in this restaurant, Hastings? A fair amount, yes. Which is why it means a lot to me that you're here on opening night, Paul. Having a celebrity never hurts. <laughs> but I believe I'm not the only celebrated person here tonight, Hastings. Oh, indeed, no. Uh, you see that girl there? That's Arlena Stewart. 
Ah, the actress. Yes, stunning, isn't she? That's just the sort of glamour a place like this needs. And the man who is with her, Hastings? Kenneth Marshall. He's her husband. Do you mind if I cut in? Nathan, darling! You promised me a dance, right? You don't mind, do you? Well, as a matter of fact, Oh, I... don't be such a stick in the mud, Kenneth. Nathan's about to go back to America. I won't be able to see him for months. Well, if you insist, darling. Order me some champagne. Elena, we need to talk. What about? I want the money. She is indeed most beautiful, his things. But for a woman to treat her husband in such a way and in public... If looks could kill her. Your brain never stops working, does it, Poirot? Ah. Well, bon appétit. Merci. Delicious. My felicitations, Hastings. This is the most excellent soup. Are you familiar with this Argentinian wine, Chief Inspector? No, no, I can't say I am, Captain Hastings. No, I wasn't to say I went out. An acquired taste, but actually, I think you travel around the world, don't you? A little warm, Lesper. Oh, I'm all right. Have another glass of wine. Yes. Chief Inspector. Thank you. Now I must tell you, Chief Inspector, about the case which is most interesting. Are you all right, Warren? He's fine. He's resting now. Is it serious? Put it this way, Miss Lemon. It's not going to be very easy breaking it to Poirot. Have you spoken to the doctor? Yes. He's just left. So what did he say? I demand at once a second opinion. I think we should wait, Poirot. Oh. The doctor's taken some tests, but it'll be a week before he's certain. Then I am certain, Hastings. Hercule Poirot, he is not obese. Medically obese, Mr. Poirot, it's not quite the same. It may have led to a problem with your heart, which is what caused the, you know. Well, we should be grateful it's nothing more serious. You can come home tomorrow, but it's going to mean plenty of rest, light exercise and a strict diet. Hoping you'll soon be back on your feet. Oh. From everyone at the Forensic Department, Scotland Yard. Oh, not more mail, Miss Lemon. This is from the doctor. I telephoned him this morning and he sent it round. The Sandy Cove Hotel, just off the south coast. For the last couple of years, it's been run as a health resort. It's highly recommended. A strict regime of diet and exercise, sunshine and the sea. No, Miss Lemon, this is not for Poirot. Your doctor disagrees, Mr. Poirot, and so do I. I've booked you a room for two weeks. Well, don't worry, Poirot. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. I'm sure you will too, Captain Hastings. You're going as well. Hmm? Well, you didn't expect Mr. Poirot to go on his own. It is on an island. 
Well, don't worry, Poirot. You won't have to go on a boat. There's uh, that to carry you over the causeway. All aboard, please. We leave in a minute. Hello. Hello. Are you on board for the Island of the Lost Souls? Oh, Patrick, I don't think it's going to be as bad as all that. I'm Patrick Redfern, my wife, Christine. Hello. Hey. Hercule Poirot. This is my associate, Captain Hastings. How do you do? Here we go. No, I come on the recommendation of my doctor. We all need a rest from time to time. Nothing like a bit of sun and sea air. I have to be careful of the sun. I burn up in a minute. I say, Poirot, there's Arlena Stewart. Do you remember? El Ranchero. That was an evening, Hastings, that I was trying to forget. Patrick, how could you? What? That woman, Marlena Stewart, she's staying here, isn't she? I had no idea. Don't lie to me. It was your idea to come here, and I wondered why, and now I know. But Christine! You knew she was going to be here, and you followed her. No. You know, sometimes I don't understand you. Darling. Sometimes you could be so hurtful. Christine! Patrick, darling! <laughs> was that Christine I just saw? Yes, she just went in to get out of the sun. Oh, Mr. Fora, um... This is an old friend of mine, well, new friend, I should say, Harlene Stewart. <laughs> we met at a cocktail party. And it was love at first sight. <laughs> How long are you staying? A week. Thank goodness. This place is nice enough, but it's a rather stuffy crowd. Harlene, <laughs> you're late for tennis. Actually, Kenneth, I'm not playing. Look who's just turned up. Redfern. How are you, Marshall? You did say you'd play. We've got Rosamond waiting. Well, tell her I've got a headache. Come on. I'm going to show you around. Well, I haven't even checked in yet. Oh, you can do that later. This <laughs> way! Why do you let her treat you that way? Lionel. I hate her! I wish you'd never married her. Yes? Uh, Hercule Poirot and Captain Hastings. Oh, yes. Mr. Poirot. Welcome to the Sandy Cove Hotel. I hope you have a very happy and a very healthy stay. Merci, madam. I had a letter from your doctor, and you'll be pleased to know that I've worked out a complete program for your stay here. We'll be combining the natural goodness of the sea and the sunshine with our indoor swimming pool, gymnasium, heated oil therapy, and steam room. Brisk daily exercise and, of course, a strict diet. William, show Mr. Poirot and Captain Hastings to their rooms, please. Yes, Mrs. Castle. Lunch will be served at one. Yes, indeed, Hastings. It is of great interest. How are you feeling, Poirot? Not too tired after the journey? Hastings, I am recovered. I am not the invalid. There's no need to act like a mother chicken. Hey. Thank you, Hastings. Server? Absolutely. Lunch. It is for the best, you know, Poirot. Peut-être, mon ami. Your health. Here's to yours.
Waiter. Could you please tell me what it is in my glass? Nettle water, sir. Mrs. Castle swears by it. Monsieur Poirot. Oh, Mademoiselle. Stanley, is it not? How nice that you remember me. <laughs> we met in Egypt. Egypt. <laughs> I was on holiday. You were solving a murder. Come to your mom. Pardon. Uh, you have not met my associate, Captain Hastings. How do you do? Hastings, this is Mademoiselle Darnley, a dressmaker of the most renown. Oh. <laughs> Would you please to join us, Mademoiselle? I'd be delighted. Oh. Thanks. Merci. I see they've got you on punishment rations. Uh, you are here also for the health, Mademoiselle? Partly. Also, I decided to catch up with an old friend, Kenneth Marshall. Have you met him? Uh, we've seen him. He and I were what you might call childhood sweethearts. Long, long time ago. Now we're just good friends. He suggested I come down. Do you know his wife? His first wife? Linda. Sweet girl. She died a few years ago of typhoid. Very sad. I'm afraid I'm not so close to our lay now. Thank you. The second, Madame Marshall. I'm sorry? No, pardon. You were speaking of Madame Alain. Marshal. Yes. Well, what can I say? She treats him dreadfully. And she's up to her eyes in scandal. I mean, that business with Erskine for a start. But this is a name I do not know. Sir Roger Erskine? Elderly. Unattached. Very, very rich. He was following her around time like a puppy and then suddenly dropped dead. Left her his entire fortune. Oh. But I tell you this, Mr. Poirot. That woman's trouble. You wait and see. Marvellous view, don't you think? Yes, indeed. Um, Miss Brewster. Emily Brewster. Mademoiselle. And I know who you are. You're Hercule Poirot. Oui. And you must be Captain Hastings. That's right. Word's got around that you were here. Now, don't tell me. There's been a gruesome murder somewhere, and you think there's a homicidal maniac lurking among the hotel guests. No, no, Mademoiselle. I am here for my health. How disappointing. Of course, if you did want to commit a murder... This would be the perfect place. Oh, you believe so, mademoiselle? People away from home. Everyone's got a reason to be here. But if you secretly wanted to get close to someone because you wanted to finish them off, this is where you'd come. But tell me, mademoiselle, who would be the target of such an attack here at the hotel? <laughs> well, I don't know. Arlena Stewart, perhaps? Ah. I'll happily stick a hat pin in her or whatever. But to come upon her sunbathing on the beach, oh, it's the best chance I'd ever get. But surely nobody could think of murder in such a beautiful place? No, no, no. No, Hastings. It is romantic, yes. It is peaceful. The sun shines, the sea, it is blue. But you forget, mon ami, there is evil everywhere under the sun. Or well, even here. Especially here. It's interesting what you're saying, Mr. Morrow. It's almost a quotation from Ecclesiastes. You are of the church, Monsieur... Lane. Stephen Lane. I was. But then I was ill. My wife, you see... It's a long story, but that's why I'm here. It's for my health. Anyway, you don't have to be of the church to recognize evil, Mr. Poirot. I see it there. I recognize it. It's real. Ah, 
This must be that ladder down to Pixie Cove. Como? Pixie Cove, it's what they call this beach. For me, Hastings, I call it too steep and too dangerous. Hastings, you see the boat with the red sail? Yes, I noticed it this morning. It is a colour of strangeness, pa. I haven't really thought about it. I suppose the sails ought to be white. Mr. Poirot. Monsieur. My name is Barry. Major Barry. Major. I was outside just now and I couldn't help noticing you. I wondered what you might be doing down here at Sandy Cove Hotel. I am here like all the rest. For my health. Really? Well, if you'll take a tip from an old soldier, I wouldn't have said this island was the healthiest place to be at the moment. Just a thought. How very odd. I have a great fear, Hastings. What do you mean? Well, the major who gives the warning, the vicar who speaks of evil, the husband who watches as his wife deceives him. The solving of the murder is all too often the work of Poirot, mon ami. This time, the murder. It is something which I must try to prevent. is widely used throughout the Americas, Mr. Poirot. It purifies the skin and it is also recommended as an aid to respiration and the circulation of the blood. Well, for me, it is a new experience, Mother. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Come, come, come. There's nothing to be afraid of. Horace Black. Forgive me if I don't shake hands. Hercule Poirot. The famous sleuth, eh? You down here on a job? No, no. <laughs> it doesn't look like it. <laughs> nice place, eh? Not quite Deauville or Nice, of course, but it does. I spent quite a bit of time here, sailing. Best fun in the world, if you ask me. You've probably seen me bobbing around. <laughs> oh, yes. You have the boat with a red sail. That's me. I use the hotel as a base, and it's convenient for my business. And what business is that, Monsieur Black? Oh, a bit of this, a bit of that. <laughs> So, you're Hercule Poirot, eh? Strange thing is, I thought you were dead. don't understand. You don't love her. It's got nothing to do with it. I'm married. And your own happiness has got nothing to do with it. It's not a question of my happiness. Are you too proud? Is that what it is? What about Lionel? What about him? Do you see how unhappy he is? Oh, I could look after Lionel. I'm sure, but don't you ever think for both your sakes that you ought to get rid of Arlena? Do you mean divorce her? Of course. Arlene is my wife, and that's all there is to it. Till death, us do part. Exactly. I see. Just try it. If you don't like me, you can have something else. Ah, there you are, Poirot. What can I get you? Oh. Hastings, thank you. That is most kind of you. Um, a little creme de cassis. Creme de cassis. I'm very sorry, sir. Not for you. Comment? No alcohol, sir. Mrs. Castle's orders? Oh, bad luck, Mr. Poirot. There'll be dinner in a minute. Not that that's anything to write home about. <laughs> Do come and sit over here, Mr. Poirot. Yes, you know, Mr. Thank you. 
I was just talking about my trip around the island. I climbed down to Pixie Cove. Did you find the cave? <laughs> that was silly of me. Yes, of course. Uh, what cave? Oh, I've heard it said that there's a cave on Pixie Cove. It's quite hard to find. There's just a, a crack in the rock at the opening, and then it widens out. And that's where you'll find the buried treasure. <laughs> There's no such thing as buried treasure. That's what you get in children's books. No, no. Whatever you say, Lionel, dear. So, who's for tennis tomorrow morning? How about you, Mr. Poirot? Uh, no, no, no. It's most kind of you, mademoiselle, but I think that the tennis it is not for me. Mm. I'll play. I mean, if there's not too much sun. How about you, Captain Hastings? Oh, yes, I brought down my racket. And I'll make up a four. If it's not too early, I have some typing to do in the morning. How about 12 o'clock, midday? That's dinner. I'm starving. It had better not be cabbage soup. Mrs. Marshall, you have a telephone call. What? At this time? Who could that be? Roger, or Charlie, or Dominic, or Michael. Could be anyone. You go on without me. I need to powder my nose. Thank you. Oh, I'm so hungry. Must be all this sea air. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Yes. Well, it's a little bit difficult. May I ask you what you do for your work? Mm, I'm a journalist. Well, for the newspapers? Yes, the city pages, but I'm freelance, anything that pays. So you're not here, I think, for your health? <laughs> no, I'm here to enjoy myself. Christine's the one who has to look after herself. Ah, yes. Madame Redfern, you have a wife most charming, monsieur, and who I think of you also is most fond. I'm fond of her. Mr. Poirot, are you trying to tell me something? Only this, Monsieur Redfern. I wonder why, if it is necessary for you to conduct an affair here on this island with Elena Stewart, you choose to do it before the very eyes of your wife. What? Well, who have you been talking to, Mr. Poirot? No, Miss Darnley or that Bible-bashing vicar. And just because a woman's good-looking, everyone has to come down on her like a sack of coals. Monsieur Redfern, I try only to prevent occurring events of which I have great fear. Well... Maybe you should just mind your own damn business. to the mainland, to the library. So I see. Um, I was thinking of going over to Gold Cove to do some sketching before tennis. Why don't you come with me? Uh, well, well, you I... can have a swim. Come on, you don't want to be skulking in reading all day. All right. I'll meet you here in an hour from now, 10.30. Thank you. <sighs> ah, good morning. Did you have a good ride? Fine, thank you. I'm just off myself. I have friends on the men. Enjoy your day. When do you leave again? A few minutes, sir. Good.
All right, partner? Thank you, Hastings. Is that not the boat of Monsieur Black? I think so. It is strange, n'est-ce pas? Today he has the boat with a white sail. Yes. So, how are you feeling, Poirot? Do you refer to my health, Hastings, or to my feelings concerning the events on this island to which I am confined? Well, both, really. I'm going to have to phone Miss Lemon today. She wanted a daily report. You may tell to her that I am not sure. Madame Stewart? Do you depart for a trip on the sea? Mr. Poirot, Captain Hastings, hello! Yes, I thought I'd take a cruise round to Pixie Cove. But please, don't tell anyone that. Madame? Well, everyone here just has to follow me around. And for once, I want to be alone. Sergeant. That I did not believe. You think she's going to meet someone? Is this possible? Yes. Excuse me, sir. Oh, do you mind coming back later? I have some important work to do. Leave the door open. It's a bit stuffy in here. Yes. Let's go then. Mademoiselle Brewster. Something very strange just happened. What is that, Mademoiselle? Well, I just got back from my bike ride, quick five miles up and down the coast. Would you believe it? Someone took a pot shot at me with a bottle. A bottle? I think it was a bottle. It was chucked out of one of the windows. Where did this take place, Mademoiselle? On the steps, the side of the hotel. Eleven fifteen. I better get changed. Como? Well, I'm playing tennis at twelve. I better go and get ready. Uh do you need anything, Poirot? No, merci. Merci, mon ami. Morning. Morning. You ever seen a... Uh... Sorry? Doesn't matter. Um, I thought I'd go for a row around the island. I don't suppose you'd care to come, Mr. Poirot? No. No, merci. Absolument non. The Poirot and the sea, they are not compatible, <laughs> eh? I'll come with you. Mrs. Castle says that rowing is very good for building body tone. <laughs> you can have the oars then. <laughs> How is it? It's warm. Do you have the time? Hold on. It's quarter two. Didn't you say you had tennis at twelve? Oh, I'm gonna have to run and get changed. Will you be all right on your own? I'll be fine, Mrs. Redfern. Someone on Pixie Cove. Looks like Mrs. Marshall. So it does. We're not going to land here, are we? We've got plenty of time. Just 
just let's say hello. Alena! She's asleep. I don't know. Alena! Alena! You're right. Oh my god. She's dead. She's been strangled. She's dead. Are you sure? She's on a pulse. She's not breathing. We have to get the police. You mustn't touch anything. No, no, no. no. Um, one of us has to stay here with the body. Who would do this? Who would do this? I don't want to stay. You wait here. I'll go. Right. Th there's a constable. Let her convey. No. Poro. Fresh Mr. Poro. He'll know what to do. I can't manage that ladder. Um, I'll go by boat. The current's with me. I'll be back as soon as I can. Just go. Mr. Marshall? Kenneth. I'm the first to arrive. Talk to me? Yes. You get it done. What? Your typing. Oh, yes. Ah. Hastings. Hastings, what time is it? Uh, just coming up to 12. Why? Not late, am I? No, no. Exactly on time. Mr. Poro! Mr. Poro! Mr. Poro! Hastings, it is exactly as I feared. Mr. What Poro! Thank goodness. It's Helena Stewart. She's dead. Strangled, that's for sure. And a pretty powerful pair of hands. Must have been a man. I am also of that opinion, Chief Inspector. Well, we're lucky in some ways. This is a small island. We know exactly when the body was discovered, and the time of death could only have been about 10 or 20 minutes before. It should be easy enough to pinpoint where everyone was. Where were you? All right. So what kind of a woman was she then, this Arlena Stewart? A very flirtatious one. She was carrying on outrageously with Patrick Redford. He was the chap who found her? Yes. You said she was married, Poirot. Did her husband know what was going on? Oh, yes, Chief Inspector. He was most certain that Monsieur Kenneth Marshall was aware of the behaviour of his wife. Well, there's a motive for you, if ever there was one. Chief Inspector, voila. Spectacles? Mm. A man's. Perhaps of a boy. I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do. The hotel's closed. The whole island's closed. You're going to have to leave. But we've only just arrived. What's going on here, Sergeant? These two men came over here on that tractor thing, sir. They say they're bird watchers. We're regular visitors. You have no right to stop us. We have every right, sir. I'm pursuing a murder investigation and nobody enters or leaves this island until I say so. But Take we have... back to the mainland, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Come on. What are you looking for, Poirot? Chief Inspector, the two arrivals that we saw just now. The bird watchers? Yes. Did you notice something about them that was strange? No. I did. They had no binoculars. Très bien, Hastings. You begin at last to learn. Voila. It's a piece of broken glass. Somebody threw a bottle at Emily Brewster this morning. From what would you say has this come? Medicine bottle? And it contained some liquid that was brown. 
but it has no odor. I'm so shocked. I... I don't know what to say. Arlena... It's unbelievable. Who would want to kill her? How long had you been married, Mr. Marshall? Four years. Happily? Yes. If you please, Monsieur Marshall, what is your opinion of Monsieur Redfern? I have no opinion of him. And yet he's a relationship with your wife. There was no relationship. That's all just hotel gossip, nothing more. When was the last time you saw Mrs. Marshall? Uh, after breakfast, I looked into her room. You had separate rooms? Yes. It was about ten o'clock. She said she was going down to the beach. Oh, that's right. We met her just after ten. And what of your movements, Monsieur Marshal? I had some letters to write. I stayed up here typing till midday. Then I went down to play tennis. And that was when I heard the news. One final question, if you please, Monsieur Marshal. Do you recognize these? Yes. They're Lionel's. Could you please show us to the room of your wife? Well, there's not much here. I don't think you'll find anything in any of those bottles, Poirot. No, but the butter was prepared from this hotel, Chief Inspector. Now, if it could have come from this room. What makes you so sure it was thrown? Maybe it was just dropped. I see. A telegram to Arlena from New York, dated three days ago. Go on. Send the money now, or you will lose a great deal. Nathan. That's it. Nathan. That rings some sort of bell. It was the name of the young man with whom she danced. At, uh, your restaurant, Hastings? El Ranchero. Oui. Mm, sounds a bit threatening. I wouldn't mind talking to him. But if he's in America... Well, for me, I prefer to speak to Lionel Marshall. You can't want to ask me any questions. I mean, I didn't have anything to do with it. I don't know anything. Can you tell us your movements this morning? Yes. I had breakfast. I went to the library. On the mainland? Yes. I'm revising for my exams at chemistry. When I came back, I bumped into Mrs. Redfern. Well, she saw the book, so she can vouch for me. Hmm. Go on. She invited me to go swim with her at Gull Cove. I swam till exactly 11.45. How can you be so sure of the time? She asked me and I looked at my watch. I had another swim and went back to the hotel. There was a program on the wireless and I thought I was going to miss it. But actually, it was only ten past twelve when I arrived. Monsieur Lana, this is not easy for you, I know, but... If you please, could you describe your feelings for your stepmother? She was all right. Is that all? Can I go now? Oh, no. One last question, if you please. I believe that these are yours? Yes. They're my old spectacles. But your old spectacles? Yes, I had to have a new prescription, but I keep those for emergencies. Where did you find them? Oh, no, no, no. It is no matter. Thank you very much. You may go now. That's not a job I particularly enjoy, interviewing a 17-year-old boy. Yes. But a boy with the hands the size of a man. And you are responsible for the cleaning of the rooms this morning? Between 10 and 12 o'clock? Yes, sir. Mademoiselle, could you tell to us whether you heard or saw anything out of the usual? Not really, sir. There was no one around. Apart from Mr. Marshall, he was in his room. Did you see him? I did see him about 10.15. That's when I went in to make the beds. I didn't see him again after that. So he could have left the room? No, sir. I heard him. He was typing. Mademoiselle, 
Have you observed in any of the rooms a bottle which is now missing or which contains perhaps something strange? Well, Mrs. Marshall has perfume bottles. And Mr. Lane. The vicar. His bathroom's full of bottles. Ah. Could you show to us this bathroom? Where is Lane? Apparently he's visiting friends on the mainland. Chief Inspector, what is the liquid that is brown? Morphine. Is there anything else, sir? No, no, no. Merci, mademoiselle. Unless, mademoiselle. Unless there was something that you observed that was unexplained or curious, something that was different from the other days. Not that I can think of. Actually, there was one thing. But it can't be important, though. No, go on. Well, just before 12, I thought I heard someone run in a bath. And it did strike me as odd. Someone having a bath at that time. Whose bath was it? I couldn't tell you, sir. Somewhere on this floor. But it could have been anywhere. If the bath was run just before 12, that's 20 minutes after the body was discovered. Is that my Hastings? It's strange, isn't it? Broken bottles, running baths. Trouble with you, Poirot, is you always have to make everything so complicated. Uh. Madame Redford. Oh, Mr. Poirot, I was waiting for you. I suppose you want to know my movements this morning. S'il vous plaît, madame, if you would commence from the moment you woke up. I had breakfast. I met Lionel. Ah, uh, Lionel Marshall. He'd just come back from the library. That's right. I suggested that he come with me while I was sketching. We stayed together at Girl Cove until exactly a quarter to twelve. He had a watch and he told me the time. I then went back to the hotel, got changed, and arrived at the tennis courts at twelve o'clock on the dot. And that was when we heard. And had you at any time seen Elena Stewart this morning? No, I hadn't. I didn't want to. Were you surprised at her death? Surprised? No. I, I was shocked, but I wasn't exactly surprised. A woman of that sort's mixed up in everything that's sordid. Blackmail, jealousy, violence. What do you mean, blackmail? Oh, well, it was just something I overheard. What? Last night, Miss Stewart received a telephone call. Oh, that's right. It was just before dinner. Well, I happened to be passing, and I overheard what she was saying. I suppose it was wrong of me to eavesdrop. I don't know. No, please. Someone was asking her for money. She said she couldn't get any more. She said she was going to tell her husband everything. Those were her very words. But didn't you hear a name? I mean, was it a man or a woman? I've no idea. I didn't want to be seen, especially by her. So I hurried on into dinner. But it was blackmail, I'm sure of it. must tie in with the telegram you found. Nathan, the man in New York. So it might seem. But it doesn't make any sense. Helena didn't have any money, did she? No, contrary, Chief Inspector, she was a woman of worth in her own right. Well, the Erskine scandal. Sir Roger Erskine. Apparently, he left her a fortune. Well, yeah. it'd be interesting to know how much of it's left. It would indeed, Chief Inspector. Oh, she must have a lawyer or a bank manager. Well, I suppose we could ask her husband. Uh, no, 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 Chief Inspector. I think it's better that we do not inform Monsieur Marshall of this. Miss Lemon. She will make the inquiries for me. In normal circumstances, Miss Lemon, the information you're requesting would be considered confidential. I quite understand, Miss Rappelgood. However, I have to say that the bank was already gravely concerned about Mrs. Marshall. And given the circumstances of her death, and the fact that Mr. Poirot was involved, six weeks ago, Mrs. Marshall came to my office and instructed me to withdraw a very large sum of money from her account. The money was to be paid in bearer bonds. Did she say what the money was for? I'm afraid not. I did try to elicit from her what her intentions were, but she said it was her own private business. How did she seem, Mr. Applegood? Was she nervous or afraid? Neither. She was... 
determined. And that would be the best word to describe her. I don't suppose you can tell me how much of her money was involved. I don't see it makes any difference now. We're talking all of it. Just about her entire fortune. Mr. Rexford. Ah, I wonder when you'd be coming to talk to me. Are you the police? Chief Inspector Jap, Scotland Yard. Right. To be honest, sir, I find it a little strange you're carrying on like this, as if nothing had happened. What else am I meant to do? The whole thing's so bloody horrible. You're forgetting I was the one who found her. I'm just trying to put it out of my mind. But you're right, Fern. Did you anticipate to find yesterday Mother Marshall on the beach at Pixie Cove? No. As a matter of fact, I was looking for her when I met you on the terrace, but uh, I didn't know where she'd gone. Why were you looking for her, sir? Well, it's not easy to explain. Au contraire, Monsieur Redfern. To explain, I think it is most simple. You were in love with Madame Marshall. Well, not in love. Infatuated. I hope you realise, sir, that this infatuation of yours could very well be the reason for Mrs. Marshall's death. What do you mean? Well, if her husband had caught wind of it. What? He'd have strangled her. Kenneth's not the sort. And what about your wife? <laughs> Christine had nothing to do with it. If she was going to kill anyone, she probably would have killed me. And anyway, it's impossible. What makes you so sure of that, monsieur? Because I saw the body, that's why. And it had to be a man. I saw what had been done to her neck. It was a man's hands. You know it and so do I. But I only want to go to the mainland for a couple of hours. Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. I'll take that from you. What? Mr. Poirot, is it really true that no one can leave the island? I'm afraid I'm keeping everyone here until I've completed my investigations. Yeah, Mademoiselle Brewster, there is something that I do wish to ask you. Oh, yes? We spoke together of Elena Stewart the day before her body it was discovered. Yes, I was wondering when you'd ask me about that. And you said? I'd be happy to stick a hat pin in her. I wasn't being serious. A year ago, I invested money in a play. She was starring. But after the first performance, she just walked out. So you lost your investment? All of it. Of course, I was annoyed. But it was a stupid thing to say. I really didn't mean it. An unfortunate coincidence. But I was nowhere near the beach when it happened. And Mr. Redfern was with me when we found her. It must have been a great shock to you to discover the body. It's horrible. At first, she didn't look dead. She just looked as if she was sunbathing. But then you moved more close? I saw it once. There was something unnatural about the way she was lying. Her arms. And underneath her tan. She had a lovely tan before she even arrived here. There was a sort of paleness. The paleness of death? Yes. I'll never forget it. But you're black. Is the tractor leaving? Because if it is, I'm going home now. I'm sorry, sir. No one is to leave the island. What? They've just told me the same. <laughs> you can't stop me. I'll take my own boat if I have to. I wouldn't try that if I were you, sir. Monsieur Blatt, I would be interested to know why it was your boat was anchored close to the beach at Pixie Cove the day before Elena Stewart died. It wasn't. We both saw it. Well, maybe I went for a swim. I don't remember where I was, really. I stopped and went for a swim. How long do you propose to keep us here? As long as it takes. Mademoiselle, may I introduce the Chief Inspector Jap of Scotland Yard? How do you do? Let's get straight down to brass tacks, Chief Inspector. Please sit down. Merci, mademoiselle. I expect you want to know my movements at the time of the crime. If you don't mind, Miss Darnley. I've written them down. I thought it would save time. Oh, thank you. Breakfast at nine, left the hotel at around half past, walked over to Sunny Ledge, arriving about a quarter to ten. Sunny Ledge? Uh, it's on top of the cliffs. You get a good view of Pixie Cove. You can see the whole beach, the cave, everything. Uh, and before you ask me, yes, I did see Arlena arrive in that boat of hers. But that's all I saw. Hmm. 
You returned to the hotel at 10 to 12 and arrived at the tennis court 10 minutes later. Is that it? I'm afraid so. Mademoiselle Darnley, a moment ago you mentioned the view of the beach at Pixie Cove. You remarked that you could see the cave? Yes. It's, it's quite hard to make out the entrance from there. It's concealed. But you can see it. Yes. So this cave, it does indeed exist. There's a cave, all right. Good Lord. Well, there's nothing here. Not to see there's nothing, Chief Inspector, but to smell. Seaweed? Perfume. Hastings, you recall that in the bedroom of Elena Stewart there was a bottle of perfume that I smelled? You mean it's the same? Wait. There's some footprints. Flat. No heel. Canvas. Beach shoes or something. And to where do these footprints lead, Chief Inspector? Ah, oh, it's a dead end. Wait a minute. I do not think so. Changes everything, Poirot. Drugs. That's what's at the bottom of this. Perhaps, Chief Inspector. No doubt about it, if you ask me. Why are we going to the mainland, Poirot? What's so important to the case? It is not important, Hastings. It is vital. There you are, sir. Well, uh, Hastings, the little grey cells, they are as the army of Napoleon. You mean they march on their stomach? And for you, sir? Thank you. You had any thoughts then, Poirot? Mm, it is true, Chief Inspector, that the discovery of a large quantity of herring close to the place where Elena Stewart was murdered would indicate that this was the motive for the crime. You said you smelt her perfume in the cave. Right. Well, there you are then. She went into the cave, stumbled on the heroin, realized there was some sort of drugs ring operating on the island. Someone strangled her to silence her. Mm. No. One question, Chief Inspector. In the cave, it is dark and unpleasant, no? Why did she enter? Was she indeed being blackmailed? Also, what was in the bottle that was thrown at Mademoiselle Brewster? And how did the spectacles of Lionel Marshall come to be at the bottom of the ladder? And, and yes, also, I wonder what was in the book that he was reading. It's good to see you back on form, Poirot. <laughs> One helping of spotted dick and you'll probably solve it. <laughs> Lionel Marshall, a young man staying on the island. Let me have a look. He borrowed a book yesterday morning. Oh, yes. Of course, I remember now. I thought it was a rather strange choice, but he said it was for a homework project. And the name of the book, if you please, Mother. Dangerous Chemicals and Poisons. Excuse me. Those two, what are they still doing here? Well, perhaps they're taking out a book on bird watching. It all begins to make sense. What, you mean Lionel Marshall? Well, there was obviously no love lost between him and his stepmother. You mean he was thinking of poisoning her? And in the end, he used his bare hands. I think he's only 17. His things. Is that not Monsieur Lane? That's a chemist's shop, and he had drugs of some sort in his room. Hello. Monsieur Lane! 
Mr. Porter. You have heard about the events on the island? Yes. Dreadful. They were talking about it in the shop. Perhaps you return now to the hotel? Yes. We'll come with you. I was on the mainland all day. I couldn't have had anything to do with it. Why didn't you return here last night, sir? I was having dinner with a friend. The Bishop of Exmouth. It was late, so he suggested I stay the night. And for what purpose have you come here to this island, Monsieur Lynn? I've told you. I've been ill. I needed a rest for my nerves. And you're a vicar? I was. The Church of St. Matthew at Blackridge in Kent. I had to leave. Why was that? There was a scandal. My wife. You see, she left me. She ran away with a member of my congregation. She was a wicked woman. She should have been punished. I've got a question for you, if you don't mind, Miss Lane. Are you by any chance taking some sort of drugs? I have an opiate prescribed by my doctor. It's for my nerves, but it's perfectly legal, Chief Inspector. I've done nothing wrong. An opiate? I wonder. Did you not remark, Chief Inspector, the village of which he spoke? Blackridge. Blackridge. Oh, wait a minute. Alice Corrigan. It was a murder unsolved, Nesper. About two years ago, she was strangled too. Do you think there's a link? Well, it's a bit of a coincidence. The Reverend comes from a place with an unsolved murder and now the same thing happens here. Well, perhaps someone should ask a few more questions. Yet another task for the inimitable Miss Lemon. Thank you. Miss Lemon? Chief Inspector. Weston, Charles Weston, do come this way. So, how is Mr. Poirot? He was meant to be having a rest. I'd very much like to meet him. Of course, I've heard a lot about him. But there's the Church of St. Matthew. This is where the body was found. Ugh, strangled. Yes. She was found by a games mistress, Jane Martindale. She was cycling in the area. Must have rather spoiled her holiday. She reported it to us. What can you tell me about the dead girl? Alice Corrigan. She was 27, engaged to be married. She was a wealthy woman in her own right. We think that might have been the motive. You thought she'd been killed by her fiancé? Edward Devereux. Oh, yes. He inherited everything. But the body was discovered at quarter past ten in the middle of the morning church service, and he was on the London train at the time, non-stop to Blackridge. And we had a dozen witnesses who saw him get on and get off. It couldn't have been him. So, when are you going to allow us off the island and let us go home, Mr. Poirot? I have already asked the Chief Inspector, Jeff, to open up this island once again. Oh. Really? Oh, yes, Monsieur Black. The new guests, they are now permitted to arrive. Good. Well, I'm going, if you don't mind. I've had enough of hanging around. Have you worked it out yet? Oh, this is a case most complicated, Mademoiselle Brewster. But you you must have some idea. My dear Mademoiselle, I am a man very simple. I always incline to the belief that the person who is most obvious is the one who commits the crime. And in this case, there is indicated very clearly one person. Who? But there is what you might call the snag, eh? 
because it seems impossible for this person to have committed the crime. So Poirot was right. As usual. Come bird watching, have we? Don't think we'll find many birds nesting in there, will you? What do you want? We haven't done anything wrong, you know. I know. I suppose that depends on what's inside that box you've just taken. And I think we all know what that is, don't we? All right, get back. Don't be daft. You're not going to use that. I've got men all over this island. You're lying. Shoot them. Shoot them both and let's get out of here. I am a chief inspector from Scotland Yard. Put that gun down. Do it! Wait! Ah! Are you all right? Damn you! Don't let him get away! Come on, you! On your feet! Stop it! Hey. I'm with the Home Office. Seconded to Scotland Yard for drug inquiries. Why, you mean you're one of us? Why didn't someone tell me? Sorry about that. Had to keep it under wraps. <laughs> Hold on over there. I am sorry I tried to warn you off the way I did, Mr. Poirot. I've been watching this place for months, and I was afraid you were going to blow the whole operation. It is of no matter, Major Barry. Mm. Anyway, I've got them. That's all that matters. Your two bird watchers. <laughs> oh, they had a good thing going for them down here. The stuff coming in from the continent. But how did it get here? Oh, that, Hastings, is most simple. What do you think you're doing? Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. This is an outrage. Oh, the game, it is over, Monsieur Blatt. Ah. And there, Hastings, is the answer to your question. It is Monsieur Blatt who speaks of Deauville and of Nice, but chooses to sail here. And, of course, he wears the sailing shoes made of canvas. The footprints in the cave. Oui, c'est ça. The heroine it is carried from France with a red sail, which signals to the mainland that it arrives. And the white sail is the all clear. Oui. You have got it in one, Mr. Poirot. Mm. Now, we've known about this gang for some time. We just couldn't pinpoint the place of entry. Take him away. Come on. Well, it's hard. Wait a minute, Poirot. Are you seriously suggesting that all this had nothing to do with the death of Arlena Stewart? So it would now appear. But you said she went into the cave. You smelled her perfume. That is indeed what I thought, Chief Inspector. But then the question becomes, why did Arlena Stewart enter the cave? Well, perhaps she was hiding from someone. Hastings... Once again, you arrive at an explanation which makes everything clear. Not to me, it doesn't. You mean she was afraid of someone? I mean, these things that there is evil on this island. And the murder that took place here was the work of a mind that was brilliant. But there was one thing that the killer did not expect. Huh? The mind of Hercule Poirot. Eh bien. Now is the time for these two minds to meet. Huh? And the truth at last must come to light. I congratulate you, Miss Lemon. You have achieved a great success. So you think that the deaths of Arlena Stewart and this Alice Corrigan are definitely linked? Of that I am sure, Chief Inspector. Both women who were young, both strangled. One with a fiancé, the other a husband who could not have possibly committed the crime. Edward Deverell because he was on a train. Kenneth Marshall because he was typing letters in his room. Oui, c'est ça. Everyone's gathering in the dining room, Poirot. Bon. Ah, oh, the time it has come. So... Let us go. Mesdames et Messieurs, we have all come here to this hotel for the reasons of health, exercise, for the holiday, and for murder. I myself was here on account of an illness, but it was not my body that was put to exercise, no. It was a little aggressive. So. How was this crime? so seemingly impossible, in fact, committed. And who among us is responsible for the death of Arlena Stewart? Do you know? 
Oui, bien sûr, mademoiselle. Hercule Poirot, he knows all. La pauvre Alena. To Monsieur Lane, as he watched her swimming on the beach, she was the focus of evil. Eh? <laughs> of evil under the sun. You don't have to be of the church to recognize evil, Mr. Poirot. I see it there. I recognize it. It's real. But, to my mind, the evil was connected with Elena Stewart in a different way. I saw her first, last, and all of the time as a victim, eternal and predestined. You mean she was being blackmailed? Of that I am not so sure, Chief Inspector. But I heard her on the telephone. No, 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 madame. You heard only one side of the conversation. Hastings. Do you not recall the telegram that we discovered in the bedroom of Elena Stewart? Yes. It was from someone called Nathan. I say. It's a telegram to Elena from New York, dated three days ago. Go on. Send the money now, or you will lose a great deal. Nathan. To the Chief Inspector Jap, this man, Nathan, seemed to be threatening her, but to me he wrote simply a statement of fact. What do you mean? He was an American, Chief Inspector, speaking of a great deal, a great business deal. No, it is my belief that he wanted the money of Alena Stewart simply to invest. You mean he wasn't blackmailing her? We saw them once, Hastings. They were together dancing. Yeah, you do not dance with a man who threatens to destroy your life. Nathan Lloyd. Monsieur Marshall? You're right. He's a New York stockbroker, although not a very reputable one. Oui, c'est ça. So this was simply a case of a man who was young, who was, how do you say, opportunistic, who saw Elena Stewart exactly for what she was. A target. And a very easy one. Or she'd inherited all that money from Sir Roger Erskine. And now it's all gone. Every penny of it. That's what her bank manager told me. So are you saying she sent it all to this chap in New York? No, I say that this was the weakness in her that was fatal. That she was attracted always to men who took of her only the advantage. We were happy together. <laughs> Monsieur Marshall, you are a man most gallant, n'est-ce pas? But for you, life with her must have been a torture. Also, I believe for your son. I didn't like her. I never made any secret of it. No, it was also your spectacles that were discovered beside the ladder at Pixie Cove. At the time of her death, you were alone. I was swimming with Mrs. Redfern. At the quarter to twelve, yes. We have only your word for it that that was indeed the time. Madame Redfern could not see the watch. Suppose it was only half past eleven, huh? That would have given you sufficient time. After she had departed for her tennis, to run to the ladder, climb down. No! Leave him alone, damn you! He's only a boy! And you, Monsieur Marshal, you have no alibi for the time that your wife was killed. I told you I was typing. You were hurt to type, yes, but you were never seen. From the very start, it was my belief that one person alone must be responsible for this crime. And each person here in this room wished the death of Arlena Stewart. I didn't. Yes, you did. She was the person who stood between you and Monsieur Marshall, the son also, who studies poisons, wished to see his father set free. I never went near her. Mademoiselle Brewster lost a great deal of money because of her, and you, Madame Redfern, believe that you are in danger of losing your husband. Yes, but I didn't. I mean, I, I couldn't. I had no reason to kill her. <sighs> Monsieur Lane. To you, she was a woman of evil, just as your wife. And you also wish to see her punished. So who was it then, Poirot? It was the person who she went to meet that day on the beach at Pixie Cove. I thought I'd take a cruise round to Pixie Cove. But please, don't Both tell Both Hastings and I saw quite clearly. For once, I want to be alone. She was on her way to an assignation. An assignation with you, Monsieur Redfern. Of course. No. Oh, yes. 
I knew you for what you were from the moment I first saw you. A wastrel, cheating and defrauding women of wealth. Like Nathan Lloyd and all the other young men who were drawn to her, she was your prey. To hell with you. You've got it all wrong. Well, it can't be in Redfern. He was the one who discovered her. Seemingly so, yes, Chief Inspector. But what if the body that was discovered by Monsieur Redfern on the beach that day was not, in fact, Arlena Stewart? Oh, but it was, Mr. Poirot. I saw her myself. No, Mademoiselle Brewster, you saw what you were meant to see. And I will tell to you all how it was, a crime of the most ingenious. At half past nine, Christine Redfern makes the arrangement to go swimming with Lionel Marshall. Where have you been? I went to the mainland. She sees the book. The library. So I see. She knows of his dislike of his stepmother, and it is not hard to see what is going on in his mind. Come with me. Uh, well, you I... could have a swim. Come on, you don't and that was a bonus that was unexpected. All right. I'll meet you here in an hour from now, 10.30. So now the plan that was pre-prepared is now set into motion, and the timing, it must be precise. First, Madame Redfern returns to her room and applies to her skin that is pale some makeup which is dark. She will now appear to have the suntan. First, she must dispose of the evidence which will be lost in the undergrowth outside of the hotel. But it was a mistake to throw the bottle out of the window. Because there happens to be walking close to the hotel at that time, Mademoiselle Brewster, who sees the bottle fall. It was a remnant of this bottle that I found containing some liquid that was brown. You see? But now, Christine Redfern... Are you ready? ...can yes. keep her appointment with Lionel Marshall. She leaves the hotel wearing the beach clothes that are very loose-fitting and which completely cover the makeup she has put on. Good morning. Good morning. I haven't seen... Uh... I'm sorry? It doesn't matter. At the same time, Monsieur Patrick Redfern suggests to me that he does not know the whereabouts of Arlena Stewart. And so to Garkov. While Lionel Marshall swims in the sea, it is simple for Madame Redfern to steal his spectacles and to alter the time on his watch. Is it? It's warm. Do you have the time? It's quarter to. But it was not quarter to twelve. No. It was no more than half past eleven. You told me so, no? You thought you would be late for a program that you wish to hear on the wireless? That's right. But in fact, it was only a little after twelve when I got back. Mm. So now, Madame Redfern, she has much to do and has gained herself additional time with which to do it. First, she returns the watch to the time that is correct. This is unlikely to be noticed by Lionel Marshall, which is indeed a case. Then, she runs across the island to Pixie Cove, which of course requires great speed and stamina. Hastings, you will recall that she told to us of her former occupation. Oh, she said she was a teacher. Wait, but what if she was a teacher of the physical education? Someone for whom such exercise and exertion would be easy. She arrives at the ladder above Pixie Cove. Patrick! Are you there? And is careful to ensure that Elena Stewart sees her. However, Elena had made a secret rendezvous with Patrick Redfern. And his wife is the last person she wishes to see. But Elena Stewart and Patrick Redfern, they have made a plan. If Madame Redfern should happen to appear, she will hide in the cave. The mouth of this cave, it is very narrow. It has no view of the entrance to the cove or that part of the beach where Madame Redfern is changing, hidden by the rocks. And so everything is prepared for the next stage of the plan. 
The timing, it has to be perfect. Patrick Redfern has already begun his tour of the island with Mademoiselle Brewster. Oh, look, there's someone on Pixie Cove. Looks like Mrs. Marshall. And so to the discovery of the body. With the hair that is false, the Chinese hat, and the makeup that is brown, she will resemble very much Elena Stewart. She's dead. She's been strangled. She's dead. Are you sure? What? There's no pulse. She's not breathing. I have to get the police. You mustn't touch anything. Oh, no, no, no. Um, one of us has to stay here with the body. He chose you, Mademoiselle Brewster, to go with him in the boat because he knew that, like the rest of us, you would not wish to climb the ladder. It was essential that you should return in the boat. But I could have sworn it was her. I really thought it was Alena. Yes. But even so, it was you who told me later that you detected a certain paleness beneath the tan. It was because the tan was fake. Oui. And you departed with great haste to find help, huh? Leaving, as you thought, Patrick Redfern alone with the body. She's gone. As soon as you are out of sight, Monsieur and Madame Redfern were able to put into action the next part of their plan. Christine Redfern now returns to the ladder. She drops there the spectacles that she has stolen from Narinon Marshall. She knows that he has been contemplating murder and that he will be implicated. Eh bien, to the rest of the world, Alena Stewart is already dead. And both Monsieur and Madame Redfern have the alibis that are beyond dispute. But for Alena Stewart, her death, it is still to come. Alena? Darling? Here. Here she goes. Christine was here. I did what you told me and hid in the cave. Forget Christine. beautiful Alena. She was an actress most accomplished, but a woman most susceptible. Men preyed on her for her money. Men like the American, Monsieur Nathan Lloyd. But it was Monsieur Patrick Redfern who tempted her most of all. Who better to suggest a scheme of investment for her money than a journalist who worked on the city pages of the newspapers? And so she gives to him all of her money to invest. But of course there was no such scheme. And from that moment, her fate, it was sealed. He takes the money, and then he kills her. Why, right. says that, Chief Inspector. And from now, the rest, it is very simple. Christine Redfern returns to the hotel. With great haste, she takes off her outer clothing. And there now needs only to be removed from her body the makeup that is brown. So she must take a bath. And it is this that is heard by the maid as she performs her duties. It is now 12 o'clock midday and every single task has now been accomplished. And neither Monsieur or Madame Redfern could possibly have committed the murder. Hello, I'm not late, am I? No! Exactly on time. Mr. Poirot! Mr. Poirot! It's Helena Stewart. She's dead. Well, that's the most devilish thing I've ever heard. Yes, Chief Inspector. It was indeed unique, huh? For the murder, it was committed after the time of her death. But this was not the first occasion that they had affected such a scheme. The Alice Corrigan affair. Yes, Miss Lemon. Another woman who was young murdered for her money, but this time by a fiancé who could not possibly have been there. And who was it that discovered the body? A game's mistress. Absolument. Again, a teacher of the physical education. At that time, Christine Redfern called herself Jane Martindale. And it was she who at a quarter past ten discovered the body that could not possibly have been there.
true killer, who called himself Edward Deverill, arrives on the London train at only 20 past 10 and hurries to a meeting that he has arranged with his fiancée. Again, the timing, it has been parfait. For Alice Corrigan is strangled after her body has supposedly been found. Strangled by you, Monsieur Redford. My God. Hello, Jane Martindale, Edward Deverill, Monsieur and Madame Redfern. A couple who preyed on women who were young and wealthy. Monsieur Lane, I know that you have not been well. And you have suffered from the nerves most bad. But perhaps the evil that you saw that day on the beach, it was the same evil that you glimpsed in the courtroom two years before. This inquest therefore returns a verdict of murder by person or persons unknown. Yes. He looks different now, but it was him. Très bien. Monsieur Poirot. Monsieur. You damned interfering, lousy little the face of evil, it remains always the same. So much for your rest cure, Mr. Poirot. Perhaps you should take up running, Poirot. Well, how about tennis? Obesity is today's number one killer, I'm told. No, 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 Hastings. The diagnosis of the hospital was at fault. My tailor tells to me that I am a fine figure of a man. And you'd sooner believe your tailor than a medically qualified doctor? No, mais certainement. The remedies of my tailor are painful only to my bank account. But to celebrate the return to health of Poirot, may I suggest a little meal together most convivial? Oh, splendid. We can all go to El Ranchero. I'm afraid not, Captain Hastings. What? I'm sorry, Poirot. I know you didn't want me to tell Captain Hastings yet, but... Uh... Tell me what? Well, Poirot's little problem was food poisoning. I don't understand. This was not the first case associated with El Ranchero Hastings. It was the 14th. No. The Ministry of Health have closed it down. What rot? How do you know about this, anyway? They've asked the yard to post an armed guard around the kitchen area. What? Uh, just while they do some more tests. But I've got a fortune tied up in that place. Come, 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 Hastings. What he's done, he's done. And what he's underdone, he's underdone. Oh. Oh. But to help you with your losses, I will treat us all to my favorite little Belgian bistro just around the corner. And I am pleased to say, they have never been known to serve Lord of Tea. Lord of what? Lord of Tea, Chief Inspector. The water of the nettle. <laughs>